Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Nicholas Irizarry, who is here with Align Wealth Advisors. And today we are going to be talking about family heirs and you know how you can leave a legacy. Is that is that the correct way to put it, Nicholas? It is. Okay. Good to see you again, Lisa. Yes, legacy planning is often the elephant in the room. Quite often families don't want to discuss. It's very personal, very private, and candidly very painful sometimes to prepare for. Absolutely. And, and um, I, I know that even for myself, when I was trying to plan for my children who, who were very young at the time, it still was just kind of a weird feeling. So um, tell me why it is important for this planning to happen. Well, I think it's important because you yourself as, as an individual or perhaps a client of ours, our goal is to make sure that they have a greater peace of mind. And one way to have subconsciously a better peace of mind is to making sure that when you leave this earth, everything is running smoothly as possible, right? So when in terms of legacy planning, we look at an integrated holistic viewpoint, any really good plan it should address at least legacy planning, which is kind of the tail end of it. And it should be really comprehensive, uh, a necessary part of it that's integrated with everything else that you have with your plan. Okay. So that's kind of how we operate. I don't know if uh, folks that are listening to us today have uh, this kind of legacy planning in place, and that's why we're, we're talking about it. Okay. So there's two different things that you want to have. You have creating a go-to and an evolve. So what is the difference? Let's, is is the, the go-to the professional contact? Yeah, so it could be a family member, it could be a corporate entity, and it could be um, just a place that, uh, for example, the old school way of looking at it, look, my safe is over there in the, in the parlor. You know, it's in the wall. There's a dot. Here's a combination to the safe. So that's the go-to. But what we suggest is having a go-to that is a human entity, mm-hmm. a, uh, a human entity that the, that the family or the heir can go to, literally call and or go to and say, hey, what next? You know, it's not only a distraught time in someone's life, but it's very difficult to pick up the pieces. So to get leave a safety deposit box key or a combination to me is not really a go-to. A go-to should be a human being at a place, either at a professional firm like, like mine or a trust company. Okay. And then the e-vault is where all the data today is stored. Now, this is something that a lot of our clients are like, e-vault? What does that mean? Electronic vault, like e-signature, electronic signature. Electronic Vault actually stores data, and it's encrypted data. It's very safe. In fact, it's safer than anything you could ever store in your house or a bank. And the reason why is it's not vulnerable to fires, theft, loss. You know, someone loses the key, loses the combination. No, an eVault is set aside for with data that can contain all of the stuff that we'll talk about. Okay, now is the is the eVault something that your company provides, or is it a third party? Well, it is a third party, but my company provides that to our clients. Uh, quite often clients say, hey, you know, this sounds really great. Uh, however, they need, a, again, a human entity, someone to serve them in a way that they can function and utilize these incredible tools. And eVault is a tool. And it's incredibly valuable if someone has access to it. So we provide it at no cost to our clients. Yeah, I, was just, I was just thinking about this the other day because I was going to be traveling out of the country and I'm thinking, okay, who am I going to give this to? So I was talking to my daughter and I said, okay, here's the combo and you have all these different things that you're telling them, but then I totally forgot about all this other stuff. So, yeah. that, so in your e-vault, you want to have uh, what, like documents? Yes. So documents for certain. Again, you know, life insurance documents, of course, uh, the, your will, if you have one, your trust, you know, all the documents that you think of that are physically in, in paper form can easily be scanned and put into this e-vault mm-hmm. and encrypted. So in other words, they're not, they're not able to be, a, you know, they're private. You can't get at them unless you have the encrypted information. So that has also contact information for all the other people that might be needed doctors, lawyers, you know, financial professionals, bank accounts, all that stuff goes into an e-vault. Okay. And it's retrievable literally by anyone that has access to that e-vault. Is that, would you, would you, put, a, would you put a DNR in there? Of course. Uh, so a DNR, as, as is sometimes called a living will or do not resuscitate, we make sure all those kind of documents are inside 
this e-vault so that they're retrievable uh, at a time of need. Okay, what are some other things that you would not necessarily know to put in the e-vault? Well, again, you have the traditional stuff and then the non-traditional stuff, which is where it gets a little sticky. So if you think about, you have something, some sort of message, you mentioned your daughter, some sort of message that you want to impart to your children or to your grandchildren, and you want that message to be either a video, a, a, a verbal, you know, recording, written, a, 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 it could be something you hand wrote and have it scanned once again and put in this e-vault. Artwork could be in, this, in, in the e-vault, the access to where it's located, mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, so videos, recordings, artwork, personal items can be at least recorded as to where they're located and how to get to them. Once again, it's really important to know that this e-vault can be accessed. Let's say your daughter lives in Colorado and God forbid something happens to you, then the, the go-to person, someone like myself, would say, okay, let's access the e-vault. We access the e-vault and all the documents are available to your daughter in Colorado immediately, within seconds, literally fractions of a second. So all this stuff can be stored very well and indefinitely without worrying about, again, safety deposit boxes or safes. Right, right. Well, and the encryption helps too, because that makes people feel a little bit better about their information not getting in the wrong hands. So, so give me an overall, so what are some of the advantages of having a legacy plan? Well, once again, I think number one, it's I'm a behavioral financial advisor. I look at the feelings and meanings behind things. The biggest and most important reason for doing legacy planning is for your own peace of mind, selfishly speaking. However, if you know that you have everything, all of your ducks in a row and all of your, your documents in one place and you have a go-to, it could be a corporate entity, it, there's a lot of reasons for, financially for that to occur. So if you leave things in disarray, quite often it co costs way more money legally to get things settled. From a tax perspective, the IRS gets involved. God forbid you leave an IRA or a tax deferred annuity or some sort of highly appreciated asset in a form in which it just dumps on your heirs' laps. Whether again, whether it's a child, a charity, or an organization, you can't have those assets left just in disarray and expect them to be efficiently tax managed and, and everyone wins. That's not the way to do it. But it's uncomfortable to do it right now. And, but once it's finished, we found that most of our clients are like, ah, so glad I did this. I feel so much better knowing that I've left things in a good order for my heirs. Okay. And, and you know, you mentioned that 401ks or, or IRAs or things like that, there's, there's tax, there's taxes that have to be settled with that. And so how, how does having this plan or what, you know, having the legacy plan help with them being able to control the, the taxes themselves? Well, you used the perfect word. So control, and we use the word control from the grave. So the way we do this, we set up vehicles that allow us to distribute money in a tax efficient way. Again, upon the advice of a professional advisor, for example, a 401k and IRA, you have 10 years where you can distribute that to your children and grandchildren via a beneficiary IRA. And you can dictate from the grave how that works, who the money goes to, when it's distributed, how often it's distributed and so on. And we do that through trusts. Now, the trusts uh, are, built on English law from years back for the ultra wealthy. Nowadays, you can have an estate of $100,000 total or even $20,000. And if you want to leave it a certain way, a trust dictates how it's to be left and distributed. Okay. And taxes are part of that. Okay, well, that's good because, uh, you know, I, I have a feeling most people wouldn't know what to do with many of those situations where they would have to distribute taxes. That's right, it's such a burden especially to the heirs, to be left with everything just dumped in their lap. It's, first of all, an, an, the wrong thing to do for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Suppose you have someone who's unfortunately psychologically unstable, or they have a drug habit, or they have a spending habit, they're a spendthrift. They have a lot of different issues, maybe mental issues. Maybe they're mentally incapacitated. Maybe they have special needs. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that the, the, the legacy is left in a way that serves them and doesn't cripple them. What I mean by that is if someone has, for example, a drug habit and you leave them, you know, $100,000 is dumped in their lap and that $100,000 is taxable, now it's $50,000 and then they go and spend it in the wrong way instead of a way that helps them, that might not be a good way to, to leave this earth. So instead, we set up a plan, a legacy plan that not only has things in order while you're alive, 
but has things in order once you leave this earth. Okay. Well, that sounds great. I mean, I, I think that's very helpful for most people who have assets and would like to be able to make sure that once they have passed on that they definitely don't leave the heirs or whoever they leave it to, uh, you know, like you said, in disarray. So thank you for that information. Any last words on legacy planning? Yes, legacy planning, once again, is the tail end of a really good wealth management program, which frankly, most people I meet on the street or otherwise don't really have. They think they do, but once we sit down and evaluate, we realize, wait a minute, there's a lot more we can do for folks. So if you have a need or question, please call us. You can call me directly. You can call my staff. We have certified financial planners on staff. We'd be more than happy to help you. Our number is 949-715-8585. Such a simple way to remember, 949-715-8585. We're here to help you and have peace of mind. Remember, that's the main reason why we do all this. All right. Well, thank you so much. It was nice to see you again. You as well. Thank you. Take care. And we'll be right back after this.